Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We have a 2015 Mazda CX-5 today. <clears throat> Customer drove it about an hour away. Uh, the complaint is just the check engine light. The car seems to run fine, made it over the mountain. Um, check engine light, okay. So when they bought it, they said on the drive home from the, I think the small dealership, the check engine light came on. So obviously the code was cleared, the car was sold, and then boom, the problem was there when when they bought it they took it back to the dealership they looked up some TSB they had one code stored something to do with fuel trims and they um, did some interesting wiring repairs here for this bank 2 upstream oxygen sensor um, you prop the hood up. So, apparently in the TSB for this air fuel ratio sensor, this harness, there's some, you know, noise or interference. So they basically chopped off the OEM harness and then installed this weird auxiliary harness that apparently goes all the way from the sensor to there, there, there here, I'm assuming this is the engine computer kinda weird, I've never seen that before um, but let's jump inside the car scan it for codes, see what code it's set, apparently it's still the same one. They took it to another mechanic, he replaced the air fuel ratio sensor with uh, supposedly an OEM unit and that still did not fix the problem. So kind of the pressure's on, this is the last resort, let's see if we can figure this out. So on the Think Tool Pros, clean bill of health except for one code in the PCM. Let's see what that is. A P219B Bank 2 air fuel ratio imbalance. Kind of a strange code. It doesn't say too lean, too rich. It says this air fuel ratio imbalance. Hmm. So let's jump in here into the PCM and take a look at the freeze frame data just to have an idea of when this code set. So if you read fault code, Continuous memory codes. Fault has failed in the current or previous drive cycle. So freeze frame. So we have four pages of freeze frame. So we're at 35% load, 20% in the accelerator. Okay, so that's page one. Page two, desired equivalence ratio is 14.3 to one. 18 miles since the codes are cleared. We're um, degree C, that's degree F, so we're basically almost all the way warmed up. 1300 RPM. Equivalence ratio. So lambda, bank one, sensor one, is it 14.4? That's stoichiometric. Equivalence ratio lambda bank 2 sensor 1 was at 15.6, so slightly lean. Wonder why that is. Fuel system status bank 1, closed loop. Fuel system bank 2, engine off. That doesn't make any sense because the engine is running. Heated exhaust gas oxygen sensor bank 1 sensor 1 was at 11.7 microamps. So that's, if it's zero, it's stoichiometric. Okay. And what about bank 2 sensor 1? Let's go to page 3. Minus 54. And the equivalence ratio was 15. So apparently when it's negative, then it's... Um, if it's a negative amperage on this data PID, then the mixture is lean. If it's positive, then it's rich. Uh, heated exhaust gas oxygen sensor bank 
two sensor two was at zero, bank one sensor two was at point eight. So again, is bank two running lean? Very curious. So it's very important to look at both the upstreams and the downstream sensors because sometimes, let's say you have a problem with the downstream and the computer is maybe trying to wake it up, adding more fuel, especially I've seen this on Nissans, it'll set a code for the upstream sensors like, hey, poor response, poor performance. And it's silly because if you fire the parts cannon, you'll end up replacing the wrong sensor. So this is very, very handy freeze frame information here. Um, let's look at the fuel trims. Long-term fuel trim bank one is 8%. Long-term fuel trim bank two is minus one. Why would that be? Why is bank two taking fuel away when everything is pointing to it running lean? Shouldn't it, if it added 10%, it'll probably be exactly the same as bank one. That's very strange. It's almost like the computer is fighting itself and not doing the right thing, you know, to make this sensor go back to stoichiometric. Um, 19 grams per second airflow. Number of warm since DTC is cleared. Short term is about, you know, close to zero. And last page here. Nope. Time since start, 300 seconds. So about five minutes of runtime. And you're going 46 miles per hour. Excellent to have. So this is why you don't clear codes right away because codes like this that take a while to set, um, you want to at least look at the freeze frame data to, if you're going to clear the codes, you want to know how to drive the car to recreate the problem. So pretty, pretty interesting here. Uh, this is going to be a diagnosis involving looking at live data, test driving the car. Uh, we'll look up the code description on all data and see what a possible cause is for this. This long-term fuel trim, that's a 10% discrepancy. You would think bank two would be adding more fuel to get it back to stoichiometric. See, this is very strange. So let's look up this code on uh, service information. Okay, so on all data, I have the DTC P219B pulled up. So if it was P291A, it would be air fuel ratio imbalance right hand or bank one. P219B is left hand bank air fuel ratio imbalance. That's the front bank. So the air fuel imbalance monitor is designed to detect differences in the air fuel ratio between, between cylinders per engine bank. The test fails if the air fuel ratio difference between per cylinder is greater than a calculated amount. How can it do that? How can it detect it per cylinder? So what are the possible causes? Leaking or contaminated fuel injectors, low fuel pressure running out of fuel, leaking evap canister purge valve, weird, exhaust or intake air system leaks, exhaust EGR system, PCV system, ignition system, incorrectly seated engine oil dipstick, base engine concerns, PCM malfunction. So what I don't get is most of these would affect the entire engine, not just one bank. Diagnostic procedure, see freeze frame, do not clear the DTCs. So we don't have any other codes except for <clears throat> uh, the 291B, ignition switch off, inspect the entire intake system from the MAF sensor to the intake manifold for air leaks. Why? That would affect the entire engine. Vacuum hoses, PCV system, locate vacuum leak, it says look at the short term fuel trim. Pinch off hoses if it responds by more than 15%. Let's see, we're monitoring for a decrease in the short term fuel trim PID in the following steps. If 
the short term fuel trim bank one equals 15 percent and the hose is restricted short term fuel trim one decreases to minus seven percent total decrease equals tw minus 22 or 22 percent access the PCM monitor number one or bank two restrict vacuum lines one at a time is the decrease more than 15 percent that, that doesn't make any sense they would both be you know the whole engine would be running lean or rich not just one bank vacuum leak stuff and fuel pressure this would also affect the entire engine leak down stability leak down system integrity fuel line pressure fuel pump ground circuit for open and wiring harness fuel pump circuit ethanol water mixture um, fuel pressure leak down injector flow I guess this could cause a bank to bank discrepancy monitor fuel pressure su fuel supply line for restriction <laughs> it says if malfunction reoccurs replace the PCM okay so you can see that flow chart was not very helpful it described tests that would affect the entire engine, not just one bank. We're looking for a bank-to-bank -bank imbalance. So, let's, um, what I want to try to do is, now that we have the freeze frame stored, we have that recorded, clear the code and do a fuel trim reset or a keep alive memory reset because this just doesn't make any sense. Um, then we'll test drive the car, look at all the oxygen sensors and the fuel trims, and then see is, you know, is the problem occurring right now. That's, that's my game plan. Okay, so in the PCM, I don't see a keep alive memory reset. There's only clear fault memory. <sighs> Excuse me. In actuation test, we just have this. There's no... KAM reset. Okay, so I'm not going to clear the code just yet. Let's just look at live data. So 12 data PIDs graphed. RPM, equivalence ratio, bank 1 and bank 2. <clears throat> then microamps, bank 1 sensor 1, bank 2 sensor 1, and then also the voltages for the downstreams, bank 1 and bank 2. See, long-term fuel trims, 9%. This is 3%. And we had bank two running supposedly lean. Now let's see. So this is the data right now. What if we clear the codes? Okay. Read fault code. It might set up. Okay, so no trouble codes there. Go back to the data stream, and I wish Think Tool Pros would remember which data PIDs you chose, so let me choose those again. Okay, so same 12 data PIDs. We can see that the long term did not change. It's still 9% there and 3% there. I want to unplug this battery and reset this computer because I think something weird is going on and it's just not resetting itself appropriately so let's just log out disconnect the battery alright so we're just gonna take out the negative terminal just let it sit for a few minutes and then reconnect it alright perfect so battery disconnect definitely reset the long-term trims So now let's start the car up let's see how fast these upstream start responding you should see the the micro amps start going uh, you know up and down it'll be in closed loop and we'll take a look at the short and long-term trims okay so look at that short-term trim right there minus 16 minus 12 minus nine on bank two curious 
So bank one is right around zero. Bank two is also right around zero. But we do have a bank to bank fuel trim imbalance here, about 10%. So we'll take a snapshot of this. We'll raise the RPMs up just a hair. Minus 10 on the short term on bank two. The sensors are, looks like they're doing what they should. The equivalence ratio is about right. Look at that, short term fuel trim bank two is definitely 10% less. So that's, that's probably our issue. Let's test drive this thing, put it under some load and see how the fuel trims react then. All right, so warmed up a little bit. Minus 12% on the short term on bank two. And it's interesting that the oxygen sensor on bank two is right around zero volt, and on bank one is 0 0.7. Is that a clue? There's definitely some kind of imbalance going on. Let's, uh, wanna. Runs great. Very smooth. So under load, our fuel trims are they're still about 10% 10, 10 apart. One's 5%, one's do a little engine braking. So positive microamps is going to be lean. Let's see, both oxygen sensors downstream are zero. that downstream the downstream sensor on bank 2 is pegged lean I don't like that why snapshot of that So strange. Back to minus 14%, minus 10% on bank two. And the downstreams are also disagreeing. They're taking fuel away in bank two to keep the air fuel ratio sensor happy, but downstream sensor is just reading 0 0.1 volts instead of 0 0.7. So I think taking that much fuel away is causing bank two to run a little lean.
That kind of blows my mind. So is there a problem with this upstream air fuel ratio sensor? Is it not quite reporting the right lambda? So I revved it up there a little bit. See? That dropped back down to zero. This one's staying at 0 0.7. That's definitely not normal. See, now the long-term trim learned on bank two. Now it's at minus 10%, and the short terms are basically at zero. There's definitely an imbalance. We could try to swap these upstreams around just to see if it's the sensor. I mean, those are very small currents. They're very sensitive. What would be your next step on this? I'm actually, I don't really have a good explanation. Could it be a, a cam that's slightly shifted and, you know, bank two is, isn't breathing as well? I don't think so because the upstream and the downstream don't seem to agree. If the upstream is happy, the downstream is showing lean, and we have negative fuel trims. Upstream is, I'm guessing, or the bank one is known good. Fuel trims are basically zero, and the downstream sensor is at 0 0.8 volts. That's, that's what I would expect. Why is the downstream on bank two 0 0.1 volts? I don't like that. And also, you can see the switch rate on bank one seems to be faster, and here it's like kind of not not great, kind of hashy. So that's a cool picture. Uh, let's go back to the shop, inspect this sensor. This is not a straightforward case study, like uh, kind of like I suspected.